What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to Googleicious. It's all the Google that we can pack into a show each week, so let's get to it. Now, are you all ready for another smartwatch? Well, this won't be the last one we see after Qualcomm announced its Talk smartwatch that's spelled T O Q and is not pronounced Toke, which is an honest mistake that I made. Now, the Talk will retail for $349 and will be available on December 2nd, but what really makes this watch unique is its Mirasol display that Qualcomm is claiming will provide multiple days of battery life. Now, we saw this technology years ago at CES with e-reader concepts by Qualcomm. Just think of it as a color e-ink touchscreen, which consumes a lot less power. Now, the watch will also support wireless charging and is only compatible with Android phones 4.03 and higher. It will take and accept calls, text messages, and handle weather stocks and other alerts. Now, the Talk has a pretty slick design, but Qualcomm told CNET in September that it intends for the talk to be a limited run in the tens of thousands to show customers what the technology can do. But that isn't a ringing endorsement that this is a platform to jump on when they're treating it like a proof of concept. Either way, it's getting one thing right for sure, and that's battery life. So if you guys are thinking of the perfect smartwatch right now, I'll take Qualcomm's Mirasol display for its battery life with Google Now's functionality that's tied to Apple's ecosystem. So somebody make that, like, right now. Okay, thanks. Now, last week we talked about the chance of seeing the new Nexus 10 this year. Well, the timing was pretty much perfect after several images have been leaked for the device since then, featuring a thinner bezel and what's believed to be a front-facing speaker at the top. Now, another image has been taken down but was translated from Korean to English, and it said, LG Electronics Nexus 10, November 22nd, LTE, black and white. Now, this picture leak from Telefonica hints at a price of 299 British pounds, which converts to 482 US dollars, but it's possibly just a few days out, so we'll see how this rumor holds up. And sticking with what Google is doing with their own devices, a story from Ars Technica reveals Google is working on a new camera API for Android that was believed to be targeted for KitKat, but has been held back for now. The biggest detail points to raw image support, which gives photographers more flexibility since the image is minimally compressed and unprocessed. Nokia's Lumia 1520 currently has this feature, but also offers the potential for a more powerful Android onboard photo editor. Other new API improvements also point to face detection support and burst mode, which are staple features on other phone cameras. Now, in more curved display rumors, a story from Bloomberg claims Samsung could be employing a wrap-around display in its next generation of smartphones using a newer version of Samsung's Yume screen technology that was used with the Galaxy Round smartphone. Now, their sources say it could be used in the Galaxy S or Note series, or it could be incorporated into their next rumored flagship phone called the Samsung F. Now, that might actually work because they could call it the Samsung F Yume. All right, let's take a breather and check out really one of the smartest phones out there. The Moto G dropped last week, and it's a real mid-range phone with a real nice price. I'm Andrew Hall for CNET, and I'm here at Motorola event in London checking out the new Moto G. Physically, it looks very, very similar to the Motorola Moto X launched in the US earlier this year. It has a 4.5 inch screen rather than the 4.7 inch screen you'll find on the Motorola Moto X. It does have the same 720p resolution though, which as the pixels are more tightly packed. Inside it's running on a 1.2 gigahertz quad core processor, which is an impressive engine for such a cheap phone. It'll arrive running Android 4.3 Jelly Bean, which isn't quite the latest version of Android, which is called 4.4 KitKat, although Motorola has said that it will receive an update to it in January. Around the back, you'll find a 5 megapixel camera, which has features like HDR, panorama, and a slow motion video mode. It might not be offering a big challenge to the smartphone Elite, but it's got a great lineup of specs for an extremely attractive price. It'll be coming to parts of Europe and Brazil from today, and it'll be hitting US shores in January. I'm Andrew Hoyle for CNET, and this is the Motorola Moto G. Thank you for that, Andrew. Now, let's check out some quick stories. Amazon recently launched their latest Kindle Fire OS 3.1 update that adds Goodreads integration. It's an online book reading and reviewing community, and even better, their new feature called Fling that lets you watch movies and TV shows from your tablet and onto either a Samsung Smart TV or your PlayStation 3 console, and not the 4 yet. Also, if you're a student, pay attention. Sprint and Best Buy are offering eligible students 12 months of free talk, texting, and one gig of data per month if you sign up for a new Android device with them at Best Buy stores. Now, you'll pay a little more for the actual device, but saving about $70 per month for a year is going to make up for it, and this is a pretty sweet deal. 
And if you guys like hanging out at retail stores, because honestly, who doesn't? Google has opened up temporary pop-up shops called Google Winter Wonder Labs in six cities. That's New York City, Washington DC, Chicago, Los Angeles, New Jersey, and Sacramento. You'll be able to purchase all the Google gadgets you like, but let's be honest, the highlight is going into their dedicated snow globe room where you can create slow motion videos while animated snow falls down on you. So who wants to go on a road trip with me? Anybody? No one? Okay. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong and I'll respond to you when I can. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Tong and we'll see you guys next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.